My name is Tommy Thompson. I am a member of the Crooked Creek Art League and I have been asked by some of the members of the board to do a virtual uh, talk and walk through of my studio which is over here behind me and kind of get the ball rolling on what we're going to be doing in the future especially if this COVID thing keeps us isolated. Um, I've been in Columbia for a number of years. As a matter of fact, I've been a member of the Art League. I wasn't a founding member, but I was close to it. I think, I think I've been in it about 20 years. I know a lot of you all, but there's been a, a huge influx of new folks coming in, especially in the fall. So there's a lot of you I don't know yet, and I'm looking forward to meeting you. And um, we, we've moved around a lot. Sharon, my wife, and I got married in 69 when I finished my schooling. And we, I had a commitment to the United States Army. So for 69, 70, and 71, they stationed me at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. And we really hadn't been out of Kentucky, hardly at all. But we came down here and over the three years, we just really fell in love with the place. And we went on uh, the, we completed that tour of duty, there were others, and uh, moved around a little bit. And then in 1978, we moved here from Los Angeles and um, we settled in Irmo. We have two children, they grew up in Irmo, they went away to college, they got married, and they left and then Sharon and I started talking about we needed to downsize and we just we stumbled on this piece of property right here and part of the selling of this piece of property was the fact that there was an old fishing cabin that was here it was kind of run down and Sharon pointed out she says well you can uh, make that an art studio. So wham, you know, we're, we're, we're not gonna walk away from that. So we didn't. Plus she's a master gardener and there's plenty of gardening spots here for her. And I've got a vegetable garden and it's just, it, this is ideally, idel, idyllic. I, it, was, it was good. Um, to kind of talk about what I do, I'm, I have gone through a lot of different stages in, um, in my art. I've started out just when, as a kid and in you know high school, junior high school, along that line. You know, you do pencil drawings and you just kind of mess around a little bit. I eventually got into watercolor, which is really my first love. I, I really like piddling around with watercolor. It, they're small, they're fun, they go together quickly. And from there, I've evolved into doing acrylics. And I've been doing contemporary abstract stuff, big. And uh, I'm, I'm really liking that. But we'll see all of that when I get in there. Um, I, I think that's about all I need to tell you um, to introduce where we're going. So the next thing is that we're going to do a walkthrough of the studio, the doghouse. And then we'll, I'll talk some more about the stuff that's in there. One thing I'd like to point out is that when I was tagged to do this, uh, the lady that I was talking to said, well, you can just take, take your phone and film yourself walking around and, and point out stuff like that. But she didn't realize the fact that I was inept electronically. And if, if I had had the foresight at that time to tell her, this is, the, this is the extent of my electronic ability right here. And this thing's about 20 years old. It's probably, it's probably as, uh, as old as this property is. So, and I don't think it's even capable of doing a video, but I can take great pictures with it. But so, I thought, well, this isn't going to work. So at any rate, 
Barbara Tusink was kind enough to come over here and stand behind the camera and, and, and do this for me so that I don't have to look like a fool with a flip phone. So let's go into the studio and we'll look at stuff. Here we are at the beautiful dog house. That was the name that the kids gave the studio. And um, as I said earlier, this was a fishing cabin built in the 50s that was in pretty bad shape. So we had to re redo the inside and we, we put an extra room in it. And it's um, now it's really functional. I'm, I'm comfortable in there. It's not the biggest thing in the world but I can get around and I know where stuff is. It hasn't been cleaned for almost seven years. And you know, expect that when we go in the door here. This is the doghouse. The reason we've got all these pigs around here is because this is my pig cooker. And we have stylized pigs all over the place. We, uh, we used to do a lot of pig barbecues. We, not doing so much anymore and now with this COVID stuff chances are we're not going to do any this year either but uh, that's just the way things are so um, let's without a further ado why don't we go in come here baby This is my dog, Tyra Banks. She is, uh, she's, she's a good girl, she really is. And then uh, we have one more dog and that's Willow and she's a golden retriever and she's, she's crazy. So at any rate, come on in. Okay, we are in the interior now. The air conditioning is on, which you gotta have. And um, we're just going to kind of take a little bit of a tour down that side into the next room. This was the add-on room. This room wasn't here when it was a fishing cabin. But this, all of this over here was. This is the area where I do the watercolors. As you can see, I don't lack for supplies. And I probably go a little bit overboard. Uh, but. I really tend to like the golden acrylics on the acrylic work that I do. I've got a lot of the fixatives, a lot of the mediums here. I have storage here for mat board, birch board. Uh, the canvases are stored in the next room and paper. Um, I'm, I'm really big into 300 pound arches watercolor paper. So that's where all this stuff is. And we come in now to what used to be the fishing cabin, which was uh, built by a bunch of guys on the weekend with a lot of beer. And the whole, the whole place was held up by these things right here. This is a cedar post. And I'm sure that those guys went out in the woods and cut down a bunch of cedars and use that as the rafters to hold everything up. So when I had it remodeled, I told the guy that was doing it, I said, for Pete's sakes, keep one of these things for me. I want to, you know, I always want to live knowing that I'm living in a, or working in a place that's held up by cedar, cedar poles from the, the property. Uh, more storage. Um, this, as you can see, this place is overrun with with paintings and stuff. Of course, you got to have a you got to have a spot. If you don't, you know, have ready access to a retail outlet, you got to store it. So you can see, I've got I've got paintings in here everywhere. Uh, this is another thing too that that the the guy that did my remodeling. Um, I told him I said, you know. I've got to store these canvases somewhere. And he says, okay, he says, I'll tell you what, he says, I'm gonna put a door up here, chain it up, and you can put your canvases up there. And I thought that was an outstanding idea. So anyway, that's what that does. And I have my sink out here. 
There is a bathroom, believe it or not, in here. We have a even have a shower. And this is more storage back in this area. This is a tool here that you, if, if you have a studio, you need one of these choppers. So that's, that's where this lives and it gets a lot of use. Um, as you can see, we have a scenic view out here and we've got um, plenty of room just to, to store stuff, but we don't have a lot of room to walk. And therein is sort of the problem. Over the years, and we've lived here now uh, about 17, 18 years, and I, I tend, I'm a, a collector. I, I collect memorabilia and antiques and stupid stuff. And, you know, I've got the Arrowhead collection that I collected as a boy in Kentucky. And, you know, it's just, I like to gather stuff. And that's what these signs are around here. I've got stuff that, I got from my military career uh, that sign, the Trident, was a sign that I made from a cutting board because we at one time had a beach place at Edisto that we named the Trident, and I had to make a sign to put on the uh, on the outside of it. So I took uh, I took some small tools and I cut that out, and when we sold it and got out of Edisto, I, I kept that. Uh, there's, uh, there's old antique stuff. I, I, I really think it's cool to collect old pallets. And uh, it, you know, it, it doesn't hurt to put some words on it. And I firmly believe that. It's all about color. It, it is, it's all about color. And people, you know, it's like this thing right here. If this were solid white, it wouldn't appeal so much as if there was splashes of color. And that's, that's important. Uh, painting has never finished, the artist merely stops in an interesting place. I don't know where I got that, but it's not original with me. I picked it up somewhere along the line. You're only as good as your last painting. I firmly believe that. You've gotta keep striving and trying to, to do better. And then as you all know, everybody knows that the next one, do, are, do not do, there is no try. That was uttered by Yoda in episode number five, The Empire Strikes Back. Of course, I have grandsons. I know very well about Star Wars. So, and then um, the, 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 the last palette up there is uh, an old one, and that's, an, and that's a real antique. And I picked it up in North Carolina at an antique store, and it's valuable. It's very valuable. And then the, the thing, I used, I spent some time doing stained glass and stained glass windows, and uh, that's just there and then the off limit sign over there was something I picked up uh, from my military days. And this is the easels I use for my acrylic work. And this, I've got this set up for display later on. We'll talk about that. Uh, as again, you can see, I got more stuff than I'll ever use, but at any rate, I've got it. This is where I do a lot of the cutout work. Uh, I'm working in three-dimensional qualities on uh, on stuff now. Like like this is three. This is a three-dimensional mixed media piece, and we'll come back to this. But um, that's what that's what's going on here. And then the two easels in the front are where I do most of the acrylic work, and I'm working on um, I'm working on some bigger pieces now than uh, when I do watercolors they're small they're, you know they're not very big at all 8 by 10 is not uncommon but the acrylic pieces are are big and l let me
me talk a little bit about the three things that I'm doing, which is this, I, I work in series. Like a lot of artists, if they get an idea that they're really, really shot in the butt with, and they really like it, they, they will do a series. I mean, you know, they'll do one and they'll think, gosh, that was really neat. And then they'll go and they'll do another one. So that's what I did on a series that I call Urban Renewal. And this was the first one I did. And you can see the date down there is from 2011. And this whole thing, this series came about because Golden had just come out with an iridescent acrylic paint. This was the first time they came out with that. And when I saw it in the store, in the catalog or whatever, I thought, you know, that would, that would make a really cool moon. So I got some, and the moon was the primary thing I was, I was looking for there. And then the rest of it just kind of exploded out of my brain. And um, the tree, and then the, the field of irises down here. So we've got total desolation, a dead tree, a stark, uh, stark environment, and then lo and behold, you've got this, these beautiful little moonlit irises down here in the bottom. So I, when I finished this, I really liked it. I thought it was, I thought it was kind of cool. And then I went from there, I'm working right now on urban renewal number seven. So I, you know, I kind of got in a rut on that. This was one that, I did last year, 2019, and again, it's all this desolation and ruin and broken down and everything else. Yet there's a there's there's a thing of uh, of light and things coming back together and maybe not so bad. And this was urban renewal number six, so you can see I've I've, I've been in a rut on that. Well, the thing of it is, is that at Christmas time, my daughter, who lives here in town, came in here and she always comes in to see what I'm working on. And she turned around to me and she said, Dad, she said, aren't you getting sick of all the desolation and ruin that you've been painting? She says, people want sunsets and they want children playing on the beach and they want vases of flowers. They don't want to see a pile of garbage. So, I, you know, she threw cold water on me, and but she was right. So, you know, as it turns out, I was working on urban renewal number seven, and that's this one. And it's it's got a ways to go. But this is going to be the last one in that series. I'm going to have, um, in this storefront over here, I'm going to have some mannequins that are all knocked askew and, and torn up. Have a, a busted up grocery cart down here. I'm going to put some lettering here on this sign. But the, the key on this is going to be in the middle. I'm going to have a really pretty climbing rose in full bloom. So it's going to be the dark Kelly green and the, the, the bright naphthal red. And it's, it's, so again, it's the contrast of the jumped up environment, the, the total devastation that's there. And then in the middle, there's going to be sort of a sign of hope, if you would. Hope's probably not the word to use, but you get the idea. So anyway, this, when I finish it, which will probably be in the next month or so, that's, that's all of the urban renewal thing. So I needed somewhere to go, and that's where we'll be going next. Okay, so Stephanie, my lovely and beautiful, talented daughter, had disparaged my uh, urban renewal thing, so I needed some place to go. Well, I, one thing I really like to do is mixed medium three-dimensional stuff. 
and I had this one in the works for a long time. And if you look closely at it, this, these are layers of material that I have cut out, that I've cut out with an X-Acto knife and kind of just put it together. And I'll show you some more of the ones that I've done. Well, could we go over and look at that one right now? This is, um, you know, stuff like this. You know, it's, it's a contemporary abstract type of thing, and they're fun to put together. It's like, it's almost like doing a jigsaw puzzle. And the color, you know, you put a splash of color in, but it's basically a white piece, which makes it, in my opinion, a, a really contemporary piece. So uh, that's kind of where where I was going, I won't get into these, but at any rate, if we come back over here now, with this one, the bugs weren't on there. And that's kind of where I was going. I was gonna be painting some, putting some color into this thing. And I came over here in the studio one day and this thing, not finished, was laying on the table and there was a beetle on it. And, because, uh, you know, I have bugs in the studio, I admit it, okay? There was a beetle on there, and I thought, you know, I've been looking for color, but you sure aren't it. But then I got to thinking, what's a colorful bug that might go with this thing? And the ladybugs pop into mine, and I thought, well, that might be kind of a, a, a cool thing to do. And um, so I did. I made the ladybugs, and stuck them on there and this became migration number one and it's um it, it came out in my mind it came out pretty good because it's interesting you know people what if you're in a gallery and you're standing over there and you see this thing hanging on the wall you will probably walk over to say well you know, what did this fool do with all these red dots on this thing? And then you're going to see it's ladybugs. And then you might say, that's kind of cool. And so, and again, like we talked about earlier, uh, you know, I'm of the mindset that if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do a series. So this was number one. And this, I thought, well, what would be something else that I could, I could do is the migration series. And, it, and I've always admired these guys that do what, and women that do looking down into the water to see the koi fish or the goldfish or whatever it is. And I always thought that was kind of cool. So I thought, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some, you know, I'm gonna do the same thing but this time I'm gonna use some goldfish. And so this is migration number two. And from there, I thought, well, what else is kinda of neat? Now, Barbara suggested butterflies and she suggested dragonflies. I couldn't quite figure out the dragonflies, but I, I got the butterflies. So this was, this was migration number three. And again, the same thing with, with the background material put in there, the, um, the element, that's right, this, these should be called the elements. But the butterflies I made, and again, this is migration number three, and I thought, you know, the butterflies came out pretty well, but my wife is really into swallowtail butterflies. She's into gardening and, and wildlife and all of that, and she really loves her swallowtail butterflies. So that was the next one in the series right there. And as you can probably tell, there's a dimensional quality to that. So what you have is you've got the background, which is a grass cloth, a Vietnamese grass, grass 
cloth. There's some, there's some more stuff here. The white stuff I have cut out and then the, the butterflies I have cut out and put together and then painted. And that led to the last one in the series, which I am most proud of because being in South Carolina, everybody is quite taken with the little turtles. And these loggerhead turtles, as you know, down on the coast, the eggs are buried in the sand. There is a mass uh, uprising when they, they all hatch out and they come out and they scurry down into the water and they're gone forever. And everybody loves the turtles, you know. So that's what this is. And this is, um, and I'm going to show you in a minute how you can make these turtles. And trust me, it is a pain in the butt, but they, they read well. People identify with them and they like them. So this is, um, let's see, this is number five and number six, I don't know, I, th I think a really good one to be is if you could figure out to do it would be um, the anoles, the, you know, little green lizards that you see scurrying around. Uh, it, it, it take, it's gonna take a bunch of work on that and especially to get their little feet, the little toes, because they have toes, that's gonna to be hard to do. But I might do that. Or I'm, I think I'm gonna be doing some more turtles because everybody likes the turtles. So um, let's go look at some more stuff over there. Uh, I'd like to take a minute and show you all how I'm doing the, the critters that are on the migration series. This is, um, this is the piece of paper I cut the goldfish or the koi fish out of right here. And you can, you've, got to, you've got to do a pencil drawing of them, vary them a little bit with regard to the way the tail flips and flops and um, get the right proportion. And then the pencil sketch, take an X-Acto blade or a surgical scalpel or whatever you happen to have and go around and cut it out. This paper is a mixed media paper, which works extremely well when you're doing three-dimensional stuff like this. And um, it's a little bit thicker. It takes you a little bit of time to cut it, but you can actually sand it. If you get a little place that's not quite right, you can take some ultra-fine sandpaper and just and just polish it down. I wanted to take a minute and show you, you know, we talked about the turtles and everybody loves the turtles and the turtles are actually made from nine different pieces of the paper. And what you need to do is this is the turtles, that's his nose down here. And this is his little collar which is on the second piece. And then on top of that, you start to assemble the shell. That's the bottom. This is the secondary one. This is the third one. And then their main flippers are the big ones in the front. This one needs to be cut a little bit, so it's going to stick out more than it really should. But you get the idea. Well, let's do it right. And then these are the back flippers. Okay, 
that's basically the way it goes. I would have trimmed this back a little bit and, and changed that a little bit and actually got a, a little bit of an angle on the, the top flipper so that when they are on the board, they're not flat mashed down on the thing. There's, there's a little bit of play there. What you have to do is that you have to join these nine pieces together and you don't use glue you use acrylic medium to, to stick everything together when you get it finished and everything is together then you paint it and it's it takes a little bit of doing to paint it but the end result is really cool and I you know I'm not touting my own horn about those loggerhead turtles over there but I think they are really cool and you'll feel proud to do it too that's basically how you do it whatever background you want you know you can come up with any number of things I'm getting ready to do another thing for my wife for Sharon because like I told you before she's into these swallowtail butterflies so that's what all the pieces are going here now this the swallowtails that's only four pieces two tail pieces and two top wings and then uh, the other piece well there'll be another piece in there which is the body but that's how you do uh, the the three-dimensional stuff and uh, while we're talking about the three-dimensional stuff let me show you some of the other things that you can do with it these smaller pieces work well and you can use everything from clock gears to you can make little things like this like I took three uh, they're not chopsticks but they're three I don't know what those sticks are but I took some old twine and wrapped it around and, and adhered that in here because I was military I've got a lot of the military in, insignias and emblems this uh, and emblems and, 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 and stuff okay this is British and it's the fusiliers and the clock gear and and you can just put any number of stuff that you want in there uh, here's another one this is a lot more simple and it's 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 but it goes together quickly you can put any number of things in there and uh, well that's enough said about all that let's go somewhere else uh, so we're going to change directions a little bit and go from the three-dimensional stuff and the urban renewal and we're going into watercolors which which I really like and I've always liked and they're a lot of fun and I really highly recommend them this is our Sharon and mine uh, 2020 Christmas card and I just got it back from the printer and if you all like to have things printed I really highly recommend Pine Press they're over in Lexington they're right behind the big post office and they do in my opinion they do a really good job uh, sometimes on these little watercolors it's hard to get the colors right and the color that always trips them up are the blues and you can see they've overdone the blues a little bit here but it, it's it's not a, it's not a problem they they main uh, they, they really aim to please and they do do it so here's the Christmas cards we'll be sending out and when I do the watercolors I always like to start out and do a little sketch to, to kind of get the you know where I want stuff placed and what colors and how dark and yada 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 and I hit it pretty well on that one I didn't this one I had put some footprints in the snow to signify that the old farmer was going out to do the chores in the barn on Christmas morning and it they just it didn't read well uh, you know I knew what it was but I think people may not have so I left the I left the uh, footprints out of this one uh, I'm, I'm really into old barns as we've talked about before 
uh, coming up in, in rural Shelby County, Kentucky. Uh, I knew barns. I knew barns quite well. Uh, and old mailboxes that were falling down and old gates that were falling down. I really, really like to do this stuff and all of my Christmas cards for the last, I don't know, 10 years, maybe longer, have been various barns that I can pull up out of my memory. Although it probably is not the way that the barns really look, but I was a kid, you know, and you get an impression of uh, like I got an impression of the silo and the rock rock facing and all of the rest of that but at any rate I enjoy doing this a lot and um, Watercolors is something I started out with long long time ago and I want to just take a minute and Here's here's the Christmas card from 2017 and um and here's 2005 and there's the spring house that was a couple of years ago but at any rate I want to talk to you about an artist that has had an influence on me I've never met the guy I've corresponded with him several times he's Canadian and his name his name is Peter Scheller S-H-E-L-L-E-R and he's in uh, Ontario, up in Canada. I've got two of his pieces here that I bought from him. He sells his stuff on um, eBay, but he has demonstrations on YouTube. And I really, if those of you who are into watercolor, you need you need to kind of just watch a couple of his things. They they're really they're really good he works fast and he does stuff that watercolorists have not done have been allowed to do for years and years like the old axioms on watercolor is that you could never use opaque pigments you couldn't use pencil you couldn't use ink you couldn't use anything other than watercolor pure and simple well everybody adhered to that for a long time but it's the the new materials that are out now are so good in quality and permanence uh, they you know there's no reason not to use them and he's kind of leading the charge on using inks and if you look at this I bought this Sharon my wife the master gardener is also a bird person and we've got bird feeders everywhere to include hummingbirds so she's real proud of her little little ruby throated hummingbirds but this is a thing that Scheller did and this is all ink it's outlined this is watercolor with an ink outline but I'm just totally taken with the way it comes out and he's done some of the detail work on the bird in that and Here's another one that I bought from him. I saw him do this as a demonstration on YouTube. It's a simple little watercolor, and this is all ink. The, the trees are outlined in ink, the little, the little twigs are ink. He's got a lot of doodads in here. The thing that impressed me on this when I watched him do it, and it's probably still up, is that he knocked this thing out in in like 10 minutes and he he talks you through it he's got a lot of stuff that he does with architectural stuff he does a lot of the plants and the snow scenes and that type of thing which I dearly love especially for um, for Christmas cards you know they're all they're all snow scenes but with his tutelage although I've never talked to him I went and started using a lot of the the new pens that are out that have incredibly small nibs. This piece right here, now this is a G clay of this particular one because that this one has been sold, but you get the idea. If you look at this, look at that tiny line right through there to signify the the um, the barbed wire fence. I got it over here too. 
there's an it's an 005 or an 003 ink pen felt tip marker pen they are so small you can get all the little tiny lines in there and it it makes your life so much easier if you can go in with a brush you could never get lines this small and you could go in and you can do these real fine little things to signify the boards and the rocks and all of that so that's my tip to you look up peter scheller watch some of the stuff he does especially the uh the old houses and the old farmhouses the guy is uh, the guy is really talented and um that's what i'm doing now and i want to show you a couple more we're going to have to turn the camera around though okay hang on a minute i got a couple i'll show you that kind of fit in with what we're talking about okay uh this uh, this is a case in point it, it's about what we were talking about with the pins and i'm going to show you the pins here in a minute so you know what they look like and where to get them and all of that stuff but again if you look the the bobbed wire is a 005 or a 003 you could never do that with a brush I don't care how good and how steady you were. If you're doing watercolor, <coughs> you're not going to be able to, to get that final line. And all of the lines in the barn, and there's a lot of them I put in this thing, are done with the 003 uh, sepia uh, tone ink. But the, the watercolors are good. They're fun. But I think that the ink really enhances it. It, 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 it gives it a lot. Uh, I'm into detail. I like the detail. I like to see all the panes in the windows and the little, the little barn railings and all the rest of that. Uh, and it, it brings it out. It's, it's easy to do. This was our Christmas card from uh, a couple of years ago. And this is one here. Uh, a, a year or two ago also and again if you you know we've got the classic watercolor sky the classic soft blue thing even some of the little ridging that you get down here with watercolors but if you if you follow the small lines the tree I did entirely with with an ink pen and then I colored colored it in a little bit I I can't tell you how much fun that is and if you're into watercolor sometimes the problems that you run into uh, you can lessen them by using using the ink so I highly recommend them and um, let's see now I want to show you guys what those look like let me do that okay this these are the pens and I like I say, I have been using them now for a couple of years, and I really, really are quite taken with them. They're called Microns, and uh, they have various sizes. This is an O3, and you can see that's really a small nib. You can see the little black tip on there, and it... You can make some extremely fine lines with that. But if you want to really make extremely fine lines, this is a 005. And look at the size of that nib. Look at the difference. And that's how that's how you can get all of these real fine lines on this. And I, I, like I say, they're archival. They are, uh, they are waterproof after they've set, and they they flow right in on the on the watercolor paper. It it's really really cool. You can buy these at Michaels, and you could get them in all the uh, online things like Jerry's Artorama and um, some of the other ones too. So those are, those are the pins. Um, 
I'm a big believer in using uh, 300 pound paper and I buy blocks. This is Arches. It's 300 pound paper. It's cold pressed. You know, there's three grades of paper. There's cold pressed, hot pressed, and rough. And the cold pressed is, is pretty smooth and it lends itself extremely well to watercolor painting. Uh, I like, there's so many good um, watercolor paints to variety. Uh, I don't use the pans, the, uh, the, hard, the hard things. I use, I use the, uh, the tubes, squirt a little bit out in a, in a palette and keep using it over and over and over again. Uh, I, I really, I think, you know, Lord knows I, I've droned on a lot and there's no reason for me to continue to drone. Um, I, as I understand it, when you all see this, I'm going to be on the Zoom thing and you all can ask me questions. Please, uh, please do. And, uh, you know, like I say, in the morning I come out here with a pot of coffee, my dog, and I turn on the radio and artists are a lonely bunch. So if, if you are ever out uh, driving around in Chapin and want something to do, you know, come over and see me. I'd be glad, I'd be happy to talk to you. I'd be happy to show you what I'm doing. Um, you know, all of us artists are social, social, as a social bunch. So, you know, don't be a stranger. And uh, that's it from the doghouse.